A woman, who is a hoax spiritual medium, uses the Ouija board along with her daughters to communicate with her husband. But what happens when you communicate with someone else instead and it possesses one of them? It is Los Angeles in 1967. Alice Sander is a widow. She lives in Los Angeles with her two daughters. Alice works as a spiritual medium. A man tries to communicate with his deceased wife and meets with Alice to try and talk to her. The room is completely dark. All the windows and curtains are closed. Alice, Mr. Browning, and his daughter Jenny are in the room. They are all holding hands and are in a circle. The daughter does not believe whatever is happening and feels her father is wasting his money. Alice starts to call Mr. Browning's wife Mary. When Jenny is about to get up and ask her father to leave, the table moves. Alice whispers Mary. As soon as she does, the cabinet door behind her opens on its own. She asks her to give a sign by blowing off the candles and it happens. Mr. Browning gasps. After lighting the candles again, Alice welcomes Mary's presence. She then tells him they can ask only three questions in Mary's presence. If the answer is no, a candle would blow off and if the answer is yes, a candle would stay lit. While tearing, Mr. Browning first asked whether his wife was in pain. The candle blew off indicating she is not in pain anymore. The next question was whether she had forgiven him. She said yes again. Mr. Browning's daughter still does not believe anything and pulls her hand away. The table starts to move again. Jenny still believes it is Alice who is moving the table with her knee. They see a silhouette of a woman on the curtain opposite the table. She accuses Alice of fraud and that's when the silhouette yells and jumps on them but disappears into thin air. Mr. Browning falls to the floor and is breathing heavily. He and Jenny run out of the house after getting what they want. When Mr. Browning offers money for the service Alice provided, but declines. The duo gets into their car. Jenny still believes it is Alice's doings and there is no communication with her mother. The duo drives away. Alice enters the house and starts to yell at her daughters. Paulina is 15 years old and Doris is 9 years old. While Paulina is responsible for being the silhouette and scaring people, Doris stays inside the cabinet and opens its door or blows off the candlelights whenever needed. Paulina did not like Jenny as she kept accusing her mother, but is scolded for scaring Mr. Browning and costing them their pay. Doris is unaware of her mother's scam but she keeps doing whatever her mother would tell her to do. The family is grieving Roger's death. He was Alice's husband and the girl's father and since his death, finances have been a challenge. At night, Doris is lying on the couch and watches TV and despite her will, she is forced to sleep by her mother. It is a routine for her to talk about the day's happenings to her father and before going to sleep, she does the same while she is on her knees with her hands crossed. While Alice passes through her daughter's room, Paulina leaves the house by sneaking out of the window. She meets her friends for a party at Ellie's house who is one of Paulina's friends. She meets her boyfriend Mikey and her other friend Betty. After staying there for a while, she spots an Ouija board and all decide to play it. She, along with Ellie, Betty and Mikey sit in a circle with the board in the middle. Ellie narrates all the rules of the board. The first one is to never play alone. The second one is to never be in a graveyard while using an Ouija board. And the third one is to always say goodbye before ending the session. Betty is not so happy but she reluctantly joins. They start the game and try to contact a spirit. The board notifies of a presence in the room. Paulina thinks it is one of her friends who is behind this and makes fun of it, while Betty is terrified and believes there is a spirit with them in the room. When Ellie tells the spirit to show itself or give a sign, nothing happens for seconds. Betty sighs in relief but when Ellie's mother bursts through the door, Betty screams in fear. Ellie's mother calls Alice to inform her about Paulina and their doings. She picks her daughter up from Ellie's place with Doris sleeping in the backseat. Paulina knows her mother is upset with her and tries to explain it to her. They talk and come to a consensus. Paulina also suggests adding an Ouija board into the act to step it up. In the morning, Paulina tries to convince her mother to let her walk to school with a friend instead of her dropping them off but the doorbell rang, and in came Mickey. Alice does not know that Mickey is Paulina's boyfriend but as her mother's instinct grew stronger, she forces Paulina to take Doris to school with them despite Paulina's argument. While the sisters are getting ready upstairs, Alice and Mickey head to the dining room to have a conversation. While reading Mickey's hand, she learns that he is 17 years old. She threatens him to never hurt her daughter. Mickey agrees. The girls are now downstairs ready to leave. Paulina is unaware of the threat her mother gave to her boyfriend. After they leave, Alice heads outside to find an Ouija board for her act. When school is about to get over, Alice waits outside for her daughters while simultaneously looking for jobs in a newspaper. From a distance, she sees her younger daughter leaving the premises with Walter and Jack, who are her classmates, bullying her and calling her names. Before Alice can help her daughter, Father Tom Hogan shoes the bullies away. He then lightens up Doris' mood. While heading home, Doris shares about Father Tom's life and how he was married before the death of his wife and him being a priest. At home, Doris finds the Ouija board and Alice informs them of it as a new prop for work. After settling down at night, Alice starts to use the Ouija board to see how she can manipulate it. While Alice is in the workroom, Paulina and Doris are in Paulina's room. Paulina is reading while Doris is sitting by the window and playing with her dolls and kitchen set. Alice, who is downstairs, unknowingly makes contact with a spirit named Marcus who speaks through Doris. All the questions that Alice asks are answered by Doris. Paulina is confused about her sister's ambiguous behavior. Alice stops using the board after she is convinced of it. Doris comes out of a trance. She does not remember anything from what happened a few minutes ago. 
Later that night, Alice uses the board again in hopes of contacting her husband but when she asks whether her husband is there, she receives no answer. Thinking the board is fake, she heads to sleep. As soon as she leaves the room, the board says no. Doris, too, uses the Ouija board to contact her father despite the first rule of the game is not to play alone. After asking a single question, she does not know what to do further. She hears distant whispering and when she looks through the planchette, she spots a presence. In her room, Paulina feels someone pulling her blanket off her which wakes her up. She thinks it is Doris who is playing a prank on her but when she finds no one, she is petrified. The next day, Alice is called by Father Tom to review Doris' homework. At first, she thinks Doris has not done her homework but to her surprise, she did. The homework is written in cursive and Doris does not have any knowledge of ever learning how to write like that. When Alice asks Doris who helped her with her homework, she says it's a new friend but does not know the friend's name. In the car, she tells her mother how she let her friend use her hand. On returning, Alice finds a notice of foreclosure stuck to the door from the bank. At night, Paulina and Doris talk about the situation. Doris thinks they might have to shift, which she was not happy to do. Sensing the tension and hoping to help her mother, she uses the Ouija board to talk to her father. Paulina is present in the room too but walks away. She thinks the Ouija board is not true. Doris thinks it's her father who is communicating with her. The spirit leads her to the basement where she finds a secret compartment. Inside the compartment, she finds a pouch full of cash and runs to her mother. Alice is shocked to find the money and when she asks her daughter about the money, Doris answers saying it is her father who had led her to the basement. On returning to the workroom, Doris shows how she communicated with her father. The family decides to have an Ouija seance. When Alice asks a question only Roger would know, the board answers it correctly. Alice is now convinced Roger is present in the room. Doris picks the planchette and looks through its glass in hopes of seeing her father but she does not. Alice is thrilled when she finds that Roger is amongst them while Paulina is freaking out. When Doris goes to sleep, Paulina and Alice talk about how they can stop pretending and truly help people in need and distress. Alice tells her daughter how her mother was a fortune teller when she was small. After Alice leaves Paulina alone in the room, Paulina picks up the planchette and starts to look through it. She finds a black silhouette of a man which quickly disappears. She leaves the room. Alice now starts to keep Doris at home and help her with the board. With the Ouija board now, they have been generating more business as everyone coming through their doors is convinced with Doris' speaking voice and answering questions only the deceased would know. All of this is taking a toll on Doris. She continues to feel a sting behind her neck. That night, she abruptly wakes up because of the pain in her neck. Despite drinking the medicine given by her sister, the pain continues and she decides to go downstairs to the Ouija board. She uses the planchette and looks through it and sees a black shadow that disappears soon after. She stands in front of the mirror and looks through the planchette to find a tall, black spirit. The spirit's mouth is sewn shut and its eyes are a bright shade of yellow. She screams in fright and the spirit sticks its arms down her mouth as it possesses her completely. Paulina is asleep when she hears whispers. It is Doris but before knowing it, Doris leaves the room. Paulina enters the bathroom and continues to hear whispers followed by her mouth being sewn. When she wakes up, she realizes it was all a dream. The next day, when Jack is about to hurt Doris with his slingshot but when she looks at him, Jack hurts himself. That night, Alice goes out with Father Tom and leaves the girls alone. Inside the hotel, they talk. Father Tom promised himself to not have any relations with his wife and to also keep with his faith. Mickey comes over as Doris watches TV. Before leaving the room, Paulina threatens Doris that she would melt all of her dolls if she told about Mickey. After spending some quality time with each other, Mickey leaves to head home. He is startled by Doris on his way out and talks to the young girl. Mickey is left shocked and decides to leave. Later that night, Paulina's doll has her mouth stitched and she thinks it's her sister's doing. When she confronts her, Doris tells her that it was their father who did it to stop voices. Alice enters when she hears the yelling. Paulina tries to explain the change in Doris' behavior but Alice ignores her. The next morning, Doris throws a fit, saying she did not want to go to school. In Doris' room, Paulina finds a bunch of papers written by her. She brings it to Father Tom as it was written in Polish. He knew someone in school who could translate it for them. Father Tom visits the house to have a seance on the Ouija board. Alice, Doris, and Father Tom sit at the table and start the game with Paulina standing and watching. He asks what his wife's middle name was in the planchette spells Lynn. It then moves around and indicates the fight that happened between the couple and that Gloria has forgiven Father Tom for it. Doris, too, talks like a young woman. After the game is over, Father Tom calls Alice and Paulina upstairs and tells them that his wife's middle name was Catherine and that the entity was wrong. He tried to manipulate the entity by agreeing to whatever it said. The voice Doris talks in every time she sits in front of the Ouija board is just a way of making the opposite person believe it's their loved ones they are talking to. He adds that it is just a trick of the entity. He then talks about the paper Paulina had brought to him that talks about a journal entry from Marcus, who was a Polish immigrant. Inside the letters, Marcus talked about a man they called the Death Doctor who had taken him captive during World War II and how he tortured people in the house with his experiments. Downstairs, Mickey shows up to meet Paulina. Doris opens the door for him as the other three are upstairs. Doris lures him into the basement by telling him how they had treasures inside the walls. When they reach the basement, Mickey sticks his hand inside one of the holes when a mouthless skull pops out. Doris' eyes go demonic. 
She grabs Mickey's neck and starts to whisper into his ears rapidly. Father Tom calls the Vatican to approve an exorcism but Paulina asks them to stop talking. She says the spirits have an eye on them all this time. The trio head downstairs where they hear rumbling from upstairs followed by Mickey's body hanging with a noose around his neck. Paulina freaks out but Alice calms her daughter down. They head to find Doris. The trio decides to take the Ouija board and burn it in the furnace. There, find the remains of the bodies that were victims of the doctor's experiment. This means that the family was playing in a graveyard the whole time. Not playing in a graveyard was one of the three rules mentioned in the game. Father Tom goes inside the vent from where they could hear the music play along with Doris' scream. He spots a phonograph inside. After shutting it, he sees a clinic inside with all the necessary equipment needed for the operation. Doris is inside too. When they come face to face, Doris attacks him. When Paulina and Alice hear father's footsteps coming their way, they start to run as he has a knife in his hand. He broke his neck when he flew down the stairs. When Alice and Paulina run upstairs, Doris follows them. There, they find the Ouija board intact. Paulina is pulled by an unidentified force and Alice is grabbed by Mickey's body. Doris starts whispering into Paulina's ears. Alice pleads to the entity to take her instead of her children but the entity said it will take all of them. Paulina is pulled back into time from when she confronted Doris about her doll and understood what Doris meant by stop the voice. Alice tries to escape but is caught by Doris. When she gains consciousness, she finds herself tied to the bed in the basement. It is the same bed that the doctor used to experiment on his patients. Paulina soon enters the room. The entity tries to pull Paulina away but she reaches Doris and reluctantly sews her mouth. As soon as she did it, Doris appeared normal and she woke up. She is then pulled up by her father. But in reality, Alice and Paulina cry over Doris' body. At that moment, Paulina gets possessed and the entity makes her stab her mother. When she realizes what she has done, she starts crying and asks for forgiveness. Alice tells her that she knew it was not her that stabbed her but was the entity instead. She sees Roger and Doris waiting for her as they stand behind Paulina. Alice passes away too. Time skips to two months later. Paulina is in a mental hospital where she is talking to Dr. Fuller about the happening. She also tells him about what happened to Doris' body. When she returns to her room, she starts to make her own Ouija board in hopes to contact Doris. She uses Dr. Fuller's glass to make the planchette and her blood as words. When Dr. Fuller passes by her room, he sees Paulina and Doris but when he returns, he only sees Paulina staring at him intensely unknown to the fact that Doris is crawling on the ceiling toward him. It is an unknown spirit that Paulina has summoned in Doris' form. In the post credit scene, a now elderly and still institutionalized Paulina is seen. It is 2014 now, 47 years later. Someone tells her of her niece's visit. It is someone who is claiming to be Paulina's niece and in reality, is not. 